again, I'm never exactly sure how they're going to ask you questions on the exam. It, it may just be as simple as, you know, them giving you a sequence and then asking you about another term in the sequence. Or it may be something a little bit more complex, kind of like this question. Um, so we are given two pieces of information, well, technically three pieces of information, about a sequence. We're told that the second and fifth terms are 3 and 24 of this uh, sequence. Let's find the explicit and recursive formulas for the sequence if, first of all, the assumption is that it's arithmetic. All right, so let's, let's just kind of give ourselves a visual of what's going on here. We don't know the first term. We do know the second term is 3. And let's see here, third, fourth, fifth. We know the fifth term is 24. So we've got to figure out what are we adding every time to get from 3 to 24 in three steps. So some of you can probably just kind of play around with it a little bit. You can kind of guess and check. Arith or arith uh, arithmetically, yeah, actually, I was saying that right. Uh, look at it this way. We add the common difference, we add the common difference, and we add the common difference again to get to 24. So 3 plus 3 times our common difference is going to give us 24. We start at 3, we add a number 3 times, we're going to end up at 24, so 3b is equal to 21, meaning that the common difference is 7. Now we can check that. If we add 7, then we get 10, 17, and that does get us to 24. And what does that mean our first term is? Negative 4, Negative four is our first term. So if we want to do the formulas for this, the recursive, formula would be a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 plus 7, a sub 1 being negative 4. I'm not going to worry about writing the 4 all in greater than or equal to 2. I think y'all are used to that at this point. Uh, the explicit would be a sub n is equal to the first term plus n minus 1 times the common difference. Uh, if we need to simplify that, that would be 7n minus 11. Negative 4 minus 7 is negative 11. Now, what if we say, instead of this being an arithmetic sequence, same conditions, 3 and 24 are the second and fifth terms, but this time it's a geometric sequence. How does that change things? So I'm going to just give myself that visual again. Okay, I think I heard Carter say it's times 2, but let's see. We're multiplying by the common ratio. Did I put too many in there? Yes, I did. I put too many blanks in there. There we go. We're multiplying by the common ratio 3 times. So 3 times, what's R times R times R? R cubed. Okay, equals 24, so R cubed is equal to 8. So yes, the common ratio is 2, and we can check that. If we multiply by 2, we get 6. If we multiply by 2, we get 12, and 12 times 2 is 24. So what does that make our first term? 1.5 or 3 halves. So our recursive formula would be a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 times 2. What's our common ratio? a sub 1 is 3 halves or 1.5. Our explicit formula would be a sub n is equal to the first term times the common ratio to the n minus 1. I'm not going to worry about simplifying this one. I'm just going to leave it as is there. And again, you can always check it. All right. Um, you can always check it. Plug in, plug in the second term. Plug in 2 for n. You get 3 halves times 3 to the first. Um, wait. Well, that, yeah, that, that base should not be 3. I was like, that's ah, not working out. That should be 2. Sorry, that's the ratio. Is focused on the 3 there. Sorry, 3 halves times 2 to the n minus 1. That would work out. 3 halves times 2 to the first does give you 3. You can check it with the 5th as well. 
Okay. <clears throat> Let's like these worked out nice and pretty, right? Well, what if it's not quite so pretty? Let's say the second and sixth terms of a sequence are negative 64 and negative 4. Um, you can keep doing the blanks if you want to, but I'm just going to kind of go with the logic. I start at negative 64. To get from the second to the sixth, I'm adding it four times, and I end up at negative 4. So 4D is equal to 60. So D is 15. So our recursive is a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 plus 15. a sub 1 is, what would our first term be? Uh-huh. Oh, that would be 70. Yeah, negative 79. Okay, so our explicit would be a sub n is equal to the first term, negative 79, plus n minus 1 times the common difference, 15, which simplifies to 15n minus 94. 15 and 79? Yeah, 94. Okay, so let's do the same thing with the geometric. Okay, I start with negative 64. I'm multiplying by the common ratio four times, and I end up at negative 4. So 4 over 64 is um, 116. 116. And we take the fourth root of that and the fourth root is one half. The fourth root of one is one, the fourth root of 16 is two, because two to the fourth is 16. Um, so the common ratio is one half. So our recursive a sub n is equal to a sub n minus one times one half. What would be our first term? negative 128, because we're going backwards, so you do the opposite. If we're multiplying by 1 half, then you multiply by 2. The explicit would then be, let's make sure I don't mess it up this time, a sub n equals the first term, negative 128, times the common ratio, 1 half. A lot of times in their fractions, they put them in parentheses to the n minus 1. Um, if you encounter a question that's not explicitly something that I have shown you, um, this is a, a technique that I would suggest give yourself a visual, lay out what they tell you, um, write down as much as you can. You're always going to be able to go back to that explicit formula or, or something like that to be able to, to figure it out. Uh, so don't freak out if it's not exactly something that I've already shown you. Okay?